Well, hello once again. Yes, this is me, Leonard Wells, broadcasting as usual and as always from Haslingdon, north of Manchester in the UK, on Thursday the 8th of December 2011. Today, I am reminded of how a British government the present government stole three quarters of a million pounds from its citizens. And I, I use the word stole um, correctly. This is a UK national identity card. This is what I and 24,000 other British citizens slightly more than 24,000 actually, paid £30 each for and went to a lot of trouble to get just over a year ago when they first came out. And I was very proud to use this identity card when I travelled to Romania. Uh, and uh, the uh, immigration and customs man in uh, Romania was very impressed and he went to show it to his colleague. This was the first one he'd seen. I think I was probably the first Englishman <coughs> to arrive in Romania with a British ID card and I was very proud and they were impressed by its quality. I had more trouble when I changed planes in Amsterdam because they looked at it and they weren't quite sure what to do and they asked me had I got a passport. So I said I have got a passport but I'm not going to show it to you. This ID card, the British government tells me, is enough, sufficient to identify me. So she said oh alright then off you go. Well the reason this came to my mind, of course when the Conservatives came straight into office, this was, this card was actually issued uh, under a Labour government, but as soon as the Conservatives came into office, they scrapped it and decided they wouldn't give the £30 back to those people who'd paid it in good faith. So they're thieves. They may have the law on their side, but nevertheless, morally, that is theft. Yes, Mrs May, Home Secretary, that is theft. Whether you can waffle about it and say that it isn't theft because because that make, makes no odds as far as I'm concerned I paid 30 pounds for something you scrapped it and said I won't give you your money back so whatever your legal argument morally that's theft and you will always as far as I'm concerned be thieves because it was not right to take those things from people and not give them their money back. This subject came to my mind this morning when it, it, uh, it came out on the Radio 4's news and it's on the BBC website at the moment that it's possible to arrive in the UK without showing your passport. <laughs> oh great calamity! You can actually get on a train in Brussels um, to, which goes to Lille then stay on the train and arrive in the UK without showing a passport because we don't have immigration controls at St Pancras station where Eurostar arrives. Isn't that amazing? After all the hoo-ha we've had about, about illegal immigrants we have this situation where Lord knows how many people have arrived. Well, I think it's a joke really because the, what the government don't tell you, they spend billions on the whole business of immigration and passports and visas and all this headache and hassle, most of which is unnecessary. When you, got, when you get off the train in Paris, you can go all the way all across Europe without short needing a passport or showing a passport. You're supposed to carry one, but you don't have to show one. We 
we're different, of course. That's what the British government said. We're different. We have to keep... Um, we're an island, so we need to keep the terrorists out. Well, when we decided not to join Schengen, not be part of this ability to travel about without a passport, we said it was to keep terrorists out. But actually, at that time, the only terrorists we had were from Ireland. And there was no uh, border controls between South and North, uh, Southern Ireland and Northern Ireland. So anybody could arrive here uh, without any problems. So it was a ridiculous argument. And this, and how many suspected terrorists have we kept out with all these border controls? All this painful queuing up at airports and all the rest of it. How many have we kept out? I mean, the successful bombers in London were already here. They didn't need passports to come in. Well, by the sound of it, I've been riding a high horse. <laughs> well, I often do. Probably why I've got high blood pressure. But it just rankles me that they make such a big song and dance about this. But actually, you know, it wasn't that long ago when you didn't need a passport. And is it really, really, really necessary when you think about it? You don't have to carry a passport in the street here, do you? Well, why do we get so alarmed when we think that people might arrive in the UK without a passport? Do we assume anybody who arrives here without a, showing his passport is a potential bomber? He's got a bomb strapped to his chest or something. This is the kind of... Um, atmosphere that is engendered by certain newspapers and certain m members of um, the media for something to say, something to write. They have to fill the space. So they think this is a good idea because bad news is always good news. But actually, one of the biggest problems on the planet Earth is nationality. The other one is religion. There are the two main things which divide people. So, that's it. God bless, while it's still legal in the UK to say God bless. I say it once again, the British government stole three quarters of a million pounds from its own people. Stole it. Said it won't give you your money back tore it up and said you won't get your money back. If that happened in any other walk of life, people would be rioting in the streets. Come to think of it, we do have riots in the streets. Well, cheerio for now. God bless while it's still legal here to say God bless. Take care.